To those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Tijuana Jackson. I'm a life coach with a goon hand. Right off the bat, like the Rona. Buzz. Somebody break that down to these guppies. Like I always say, Rome wasn't built in the day that was Utah. Buzz. But yeah, I've been on vacation. Nigga had a little hiatus. Spent some time trying to bond with my newborn. Getting a hold of him, looking me in his eye. And it kind of tripped me out because he looked me back in my eye. I ain't had my shades on. You know what I'm saying? Old lady wouldn't let me wear my shades while I was with my baby. Took my cigarettes too. It's all good though. And as I observe this little motherfucker, sometimes I'll be talking, I look over this little nigga, this motherfucker looking dead at me. And the way he looking at me, he ain't looking at me, he looking into me. And I realized I was being downloaded, downloaded by a newborn. And I know for a fact the kids don't live how you tell them to live, they live how you show them to live. Boss. So the little nigga downloaded me. So I got to improve some things. That when you realize this, it's nothing I can tell you. What we tend to do as adults is we tend to put ourselves in a situation where we think we can just give advice and just by bestowing advice on an individual or on a child that they are somehow better off. No, nigga. Mm -mm. Especially if you got a daughter. You can't tell daughter shit. You got to show daughter. But all daughters are some show me Missouri. You heard me? <laughs> So the point is, I gotta improve some things about myself if I'm gonna have this newborn in my life. If I plan to be the example, I ain't never really changed nobody's life, ever. But what I have done is I've inspired them to change their own life through example. Boom. So one of the things I need to do is I need to learn how to communicate better. I might even get a communication coach to come on to the academy and break down maybe a seminar for us. Put up the money myself. I think it might be worthwhile. How do I want to communicate better? I want to be more direct, less thinking out loud. I really want to put thought to what comes out of my mouth before I say it. I have a tendency to kind of just blurt off sometimes, maybe emotionally. Sometimes I just blurt off out of inspiration, but it's not always the most appropriate thing to say. You heard me? Another thing I don't want to do is I don't want to come with these snarky remarks. Sarcasm. If a nigga need help, ask for help. Don't hint at it. You heard me? Lazy communication is like putting your life on Spirit Airlines. This nigga, by the time you get to where you going, your opportunity might already be gone. Balls. A poor communicator is his own IRS. Balls. But on some real shit, poor communication robs the people around you of the opportunity to truly be of service. Balls. Another thing I learned about poor communication is that it is a form of manipulation and avoidance of accountability. Balls. Let me explain. Someone wants to have a discussion about you about something you did that might not have been appropriate or might made them feel a kind of way. Maybe it came off a little sketchy. They get to asking you questions about it rather than answer the question straightforward. You get to throwing tantrums. You get to raising your voice. You get to huffing and puffing. You might even storm out. You might break some shit. You hurt me. That is an avoidance of accountability through tantrums, toddler behavior what that is. And all of us, from whether you're 30 or 50, 60, it's guilty of the communication is a means facing up to accountability. Unhealthy communication is how you avoid accountability. You might not know that's what you're doing, but that's what you're doing. Boom. Like I said, man, poor communication is a form of manipulation. It's an avoidance of accountability. Boss. Healthy. Well thought out communication is the example I want to set for this little nigga. More vulnerability. Be willing to be the understudy. But I'm also teach him to never settle for second place unless the nigga ahead of you is teaching you how to be in first place. Pause. Another thing I want to do with my communication is I want to apologize better. It's not about giving gifts. It's not about getting worked up. It's not about getting on your knees like a prison bitch. It's about changed behavior. The CDC, a.k.a. the Crooked Disease Concoctors, they reported that half of all female homicide victims are killed by by intimate partners. 50% all female homicide victims are killed by somebody they was fucking boss. How many chances these niggas get before committing murder? A true apology has more to do with motion than emotion. Boss, what actions do you put into place? How about therapy? How about consistency in new behavior? A true apology is done through consistent demonstration of improvement. Boss. It's like when the nigga who stuttered get on the mic at the spoken word. A true apology takes time. Because it's not just what you say when you on the soapbox, but it's you going to wipe your spit off that motherfucker when you done. Pause. Anyway, let me explain what happens to a lot of them. We'll say something off key. It rubs somebody wrong. Or maybe we'll do something that isn't inconsistent with our best character. And it'll rub somebody wrong. And then what we do is we know that we did something wrong or we refuse to acknowledge it, but we eventually realize that we did. And rather than say, hey, I fucked up. Came at you nasty. The way I talked to you was inappropriate. What I did was wrong. I was in this mindset at the time. It's only through retrospect that I realized what I did. And I want to let you know that I not only apologize, but I want to know what I can do to make it better. And I'm going to tell you what I plan to do to make it better. See, we don't do that. What we do is we just go, oh, that's, that's my cousin. He ain't going to care. It's just... 
Just let it go. But the thing is, because you didn't volunteer to clean up that mess, acknowledge what you had done wrong, you trick yourself into thinking you got away with it. But deep down inside, you store that shit away. Like a little piece of toxicity, you just store it away. And it just sits there and it just kind of gurgles. That shit gurgle like Taco Bell, Nacho Grande, and like that Impossible Burger. Shit just kind of sit funny with you. Then, a couple days go by, you do something off again, and you repeat the pattern. Before you know it, you've racked up 12, 15, 20 years of this behavior. And you feel depressed. But you feel depressed for a lot of reasons and I'm going to get into it. But one of them is the fact that you didn't clean up all these messes. You've probably forgotten what a lot of them are. But you truthfully believe that somehow or the other, you either got away with it or didn't need to acknowledge your mistake and apologize to the victim. But guess what? The body is smarter than all of y'all. And the body keeps the score, my nigga. So when that disease manifests out of nowhere, the byproduct of what you've been holding on to, it's a byproduct the messes you refuse to clean up, that discomfort, that this ease you feel within yourself. I also want to demonstrate more patience. And that translates in a lot of things. It translates in a way of like, in a way of relationships. I want to demonstrate that I don't have to let loneliness and fear of being alone or fear of being perceived incorrectly dictate who I'm with or when I choose a mate how I choose a man, who I choose is right for me. I want to have patience in my pursuit of companionship. Notice I said my pursuit of companionship, not my pursuit of love. Because I'm going to tell you something. Don't seek success. Seek purpose and let success find you. Same goes for love. Because on the path to purpose, you will find love, success, fulfillment, and everything else. It takes patience. Another way that I want my son to learn from me through the practice of patience is to obsess over the process. Because when you love what you do, success will love you. Love. I want him to not be this result-oriented nigga. There's a lot of folks out there obsessing over results. I want him to obsess over the process. I don't want him to get so caught up in the rhetoric and in the end results that they fail to fully experience the process because the truth of the matter is success is achieved in the process. Success is actually an ongoing process. But most of us think of it as a destination. Bars. I think I heard Jay-Z who said people tend to imitate the end result, not the process. Bars. Let me tell you something, y'all. In a world of instant gratification, it takes courage to fuck with a Jamaican. And it takes even more courage to be patient. Pause. But more importantly, I want to be there for my new child. And it's hard to be there for a child when you are living in debt. Because when you're living in debt, you a slave to the dime. Living on borrowed time. Pause. Observing rich folks, I realize the most valuable thing you can give your child is your time. I see people throwing money at their kids, buying them whatever they want. Doesn't work. Giving them time builds their confidence and self-esteem. Give them a sense of being worthy. You heard me? When you are there for your child, your physical presence is a sacrifice. You are sacrificing time for your child. But when you are living in debt, you are sacrificing your time. But it does. Boss, I want to be there, be present in his life. No validation is more important to a child than his primary caregiver. Boss, I want to be there, give him the model, the blueprint for leaving the nest. You can then go on and carve out new philosophy. Shit. Often a nigga born in the wealth thinks poorly of himself. Buzz. How ironic is that? That's why the trust fund baby grow up to be the most untrustworthy motherfucker. No one ever demonstrated their appreciation for his value as a child. Buzz. You can't supplement family with a nanny and leave your child wishing he was just a nut that it leaked into the panties. Buzz. Gotta fuck up his self-esteem. Another reason folks' self-esteem fucked up. Because the only thing they are consistent at is breaking the moral and ethical contracts they have with themselves. Buzz. If you consistently fail yourself, you will eventually come to believe you will also fail others. So why even try? Bars. If you can't keep your word to yourself, who you helping, family? What you gonna do? How much do you believe in you if you can't even keep a promise you make to your fucking self? Bars. But these are the things that I want to be there to teach my child. And in order to be there, I'm getting off the fucking plantation. Bars. What does that mean? I'm done relying on sources, outside sources, for my welfare and livelihood. Somebody hit me up. How you teach a kid that a man ain't got no titties? Herbie.